welcome to mechanical comprehension for your navy officer candidate test prep oar in this video we'll go over the mechanical comprehension part two so you learn some of the more um, mechanical comprehension related topics that you really need for your oar test prep so before you start make sure that you have a notebook and a pen so you could write every single steps um, in the video and practice by yourself and as i said always pause the video and practice every single slide on the video and then download this application called oar tutoring app from app store or google play and it has mechanical comprehension section so make sure that you do all the homework and then take a practice test and get 80 percent or higher so that will give you like enough confidence to cover very much everything you need okay so let's get started in this lesson we'll learn simple machines lever pulley inclined planes gears different types of cams pressure some thermodynamics density electricity and electronics and magnet so the first thing we we'll learn simple machines so you know simple machines are machine make your life simple or easier so you know there are basically six different types of simple machines those are lever pulley wheel and excel inclined plane wedge and screw so we basically learn the mechanical advantage of each of those simple machines so if you learn those we will cover a lot of things in the um in the test so the definition of mechanical advantage is force input or over force output same as input distance over output distance so make sure that you write that down on your notebook so here is the uh, lever theory behind the lever is that the longer the lever provide you more torque so you could see here uh, different components of a lever those are fulcrum fulcrum you could see here this is the fulcrum where um, uh, at point which the lever rotates right so you could like go up and down around this fulcrum so and always measure this torque um, on on the fulcrum okay let's keep that in mind so the next thing is effort effort is a point on the lever where forces is applied so you could apply these forces in here and the resistance is the output force the part of the lever that act in a response to the effort so the class of lever is determined by the location of the effort force and the load relative to the fulcrum so let's make sure that you you know this terminology and write down on your notebook you could see a mechanical advantage of a lever is length of the effort arm over length of the load or resisting arm you could see here um, wh what is called an effort arm and what is called uh, resisting arm so you know there are different types of lever right so um, the lever are uh, determined by um, the fulcrum location and also the load right so the first class lever fulcrum in the middle we could see here this, this figure right second class lever fulcrum at the end fulcrum at the end um, and load is in between and you see this load is in between the third class lever fulcrum is one end um, effort is in between so you could see like all this example make sure that you write down uh, those examples you really really need this they will ask you in the test so and these are the picture of this um different first class second class and third class lever okay make sure that you learn this this is very very important concept for uh, for your test so here is a um, example problem you could see here so you could see uh, this is a fulcrum in here the a 50 pound load is applying at point b how much load you need to apply in order to um, make into a equilibrium position or you want to lift it right so you could see here the the distance um uh, here is from c to b is seven and b to f is three right so you need to always uh, make sure that you understand that because it will sometimes is confusing but if you practice you could get that so you could get f times 10 feet so seven plus three is 10 feet um equal to 50 times 
seven. So you solve that and you get 35. So that means if you have a 50 pound load and if you use the fulcrum, you actually need a 35 pound to lift it. So that gives you a mechanical advantage. Okay. So that is the whole purpose of using this lever. So next thing we'll learn is called pulley. A pulley is a simple machine in which ropes is carried by the rotation of a wheel. So you could see uh, this is a, um, a pulley system, right? The mechanical advantage of a pulley, the number of ropes in movable pulley. Okay, so very important concept in here too. So say like you have an object in here and you're um, they try to pull, right? The more you use the pulley, then you need to apply less load in order to lift that object. That's why you could see like a big, big concrete blocks. They are like a lifting with a very tiny machine. How that is possible? That is because of this pulley system. So here is the mechanical advantage of a different types of pulley. If you say the mechanical advantage of one, if you have like a hundred pound load in here. So if you want to use like a single pulley, the mechanical advantage on that means you need to apply um, hundred pound or 100 newton in order to lift it. If you use two pulleys, then you need a 50 pound load to apply in order to lift it. If you use three pulleys divided by three, 33 and one third. If you use four pulleys, you need only 25 pound, uh, 25 newton um, to lift that 100 newton of object. So you could see like how pulley system help to, um, to make your lives easier so the next thing we we'll learn is called a belt pulley the same as pulley system so the belt pulley is a two pulley connected uh, by drive a belt so you could see a two pulleys here is a pulley another pulley is connected with a belt right if the pulley are connected without a twist so that means this is, is without a twist um the belt move in the same direction so it will be have like a same direction right but if you use um with a twist then they will rotate uh, opposite direction so let's keep that in mind the next thing we'll learn the mechanical advantage of a inclined plane so that you could see uh, the mechanical advantage of an uh, inclined plane is length of the ramp over height of the ramp i highly recommend you to write down each single thing you don't need to buy any book or anything if you just follow this lesson and use the application to practice because we we use this uh, students are using this um, application to practice and pass the test with good scores so the next thing we we'll learn a gear right so the mechanical advantage of gear is the number of teeth in the uh, driven or load gear and the number of teeth in the effort or uh, driver gear so you could see here um, this also the number of tooth and the number of um, the rotation there is a relation with that so R1 D1 equal to R2 D2 or R times D equal to uh, capital R capital D. So um, you could um, use this equation to find out number of teeth and number of revolution of a bigger or a smaller gear system. So you could see here the next thing we learn is cam. So you see the cam give you um, a repeated motion. So you could see here this is giving you uh, repeated motion. So a cam and follower system allows the mechanical system to uh, have a time specific and repeated motion. So you could see a different part of this uh, cam system is called a spring. This is guide, this is follower, and this is um, um, wedge, right? So if you have a single lobe, that means it gives you one repeated motion. If you have a two, then it will give you two repeated motion. So make sure that you learn this. The next thing we we'll learn is called pressure. It's a very important concept, the Bernoulli's equation. So the definition of pressure equal to force per unit area. I think you learned this one from the previous um, pre previous lesson. So if you see here a pipe, right? The um, the air is flowing to a pipe, right? So let's learn this on very carefully. So when the um, air is flowing through the pipe here. The diameter of the pipe is, is smaller so that means at that point it has a high velocity of the air right and here when you pass um it, it will the it has low uh, velocity so keep that in mind high velocity low pressure low velocity high pressure you need this concept 
everywhere um, in, in, in the aviation field. If we fly with the airplane or helicopter, it's a very, very important concept to learn, okay? High pressure, uh, low velocity, low pressure, high velocity. So you could see here, uh, this is an example flying an airplane. So you could see this is a airplane or airfoil, um, the wings of a airplane. So when you see a wings of a airplane, so what part of the wing has more velocity? So on the top of this, um, the wing, it has like more air flows in that direction. That means high velocity, that means it has a low pressure and this and the bottom side is as like low velocity that means high pressure so high pressure means that is giving you the lift of this uh airplane that's we fly if you doesn't if you don't have any lift from the wing airplane cannot fly at all so that is the whole purpose of putting a line and then like nice um wing of air, uh, airplane and um the helicopters the next thing we we'll learn some thermodynamics, okay, so heat transfer. So the main um, way heat transfer are called conduction, convection, and radiation. So make sure that you learn these three things. The conduction means the transfer of heat by physical contact, right? So um, if you have a like, um, uh, I have an example, the next, uh, next slide you could see here. Um, the conduction heat transfer by physical contact of um, solid medium right so uh, you could see uh, those are the example good conductors copper silver iron steels bad conductor also called uh, insulator air wood paper and clothing right so you could see here the convection the convection heat transfer by movement of fluid right so you could see uh, this is called um, Convection, this is called conduction, and this is called radiation, right? So we'll come to the radiation next. So the radiation is the electromagnetic wave that causes the ionize and transfer heat when put contact with an object. So you, you could see uh, we get the um, the uh, the heat and light from sun, right? So that is because of the radiation process. The campfire emits the radiation light bulb microbe this all are those are the um, example of radiation the next thing we learn is called a bi metallic strip so this is the question sometimes come in the test i saw uh, many students actually um, told us that they they want to learn more about that that's why i add those slide so make sure that you learn this thing so two different types of um, materials like sandwich is other so it's called um, a bimetallic strips, right? Metal with less is heat expansion on the top, metal with more heat expansion on the bottom. And if you like uh, make it cold, so it will look like that. Is one part will go up and um, like bend like this direction. So let's make sure that you learn this thing. The next thing we we'll learn is called a density. So you know the density is mass over volume. So if you see like um, two boxes fill out with different materials uh, and has like different mass or weight because of the density. Key takeaway, higher altitude, less density in the air and um, less atmospheric pressure. In this section, we'll learn electricity. The first thing in the electricity we need to learn is called charge. The charge is the characteristics of elementary particles. Okay. In atoms, protons have positive charge, electron has negative charge and neutron has no charges, right? So that is a neutral. So the unit of charge is called Coulomb. So make sure that you learn this thing. The next thing we learn is called current, right? So in electricity, there are mainly three things we definitely need to learn. Current, resistance and voltage. The so first we'll learn the current. Current is the flow of electron. So here is the definition of um, the charge or current is uh, Q over T, right? The unit of current is ampere. So there are mainly two types of current, direct current and indirect current. So um, direct current is called uh, DC power and alternative current is called AC power, okay? The next thing we'll learn is called voltage. Voltage is the potential energy for electric work done right so um 
so in electricity the electrical power equal to current times voltage make sure that you learned it and write down your notebook so the next thing we'll learn is called a resistance this resistance is same as the friction okay so that this is the uh, different uh, name in in electricity is called resistance so a pro property of a material which resist the flow of electron right so when, when you send the electricity from one place to another place um it has some voltage drop that means um it has some loss so the the, the main loss because of this um the resistance right so we'll learn a little bit more about the resistance the unit of resistance is called ohm so you could say this is a typical resistor and um and this is the simple uh, the symbol of um a resistor like that so that there is a relationship between um current voltage and resistance um is called b equal to ir so that is also called ohm's law so ohm's law is state that the voltage across a conductor is a directly proportional to the current flowing through it okay so make sure that you you learn this important formula um for your test the next thing we'll learn is called circuit right so we'll learn circuit there are mainly two types of circuit series circuit and parallel circuit okay so we'll learn this so um so you could see here the uh, series circuit series means in a line so here is a right so this is called a series circuit okay so make sure that you learn they will ask the question what type of circuit it is series circuit or uh, resist i mean the parallel circuit the total resistance in a series circuit rt equal to r1 plus r2 so if this one is r1 this one is r2 so the total resistance you need to add them up the next thing is parallel circuit parallel circuit means the circuit with a side by side like a rail line right so you could see here so um so this is this is one this is another one so this is the main that the current comes through this this i come through this and it's split into two parts right so this is um called uh, parallel circuit so make sure that you you know that which one is series circuit and which one is parallel circuit the total resistance of a parallel circuit is that the formula so so say like you have um two resistor here is uh, five and five so if you connect it with the parallel so that gives you one by r t equal to one fifth plus one fifth and if you simplify that gives you rt equal to 2.5 that means when you connected the um the two resistor in a parallel the resistance actually decrease but if you add with series it will increase okay let's keep that in mind okay so what is fuse the fuse is a soft wire which uh, melts break a circuit of an electrical current exceeding a certain level so you could see like once in a while like in, oh my my fuse run out right or like the circuit breaker uh, popped up right so that that's exactly what happens in here make sure that you learn this ac and dc current so ac means alternating current that like um, change the direction every second um the dc current is the the current is go like a single direction there's a battery this is a, um ac current and normally the current we use at home is called alternating current so the next thing we'll learn is called a magnet so make sure that you know this thing so the magnet um the property of magnets attract um the magnets north pole with the north pole um repels each other but the opposite pole attract each other so make sure that this this thing um what exactly happen when two magnet come together so that's like the very basic concept you need to know okay so um make sure that you watch the video multiple times take note and download this application from the link below and practice it will help you a lot you don't need to buy any book or anything uh, from our experience of uh, helping hundreds of people and good luck